What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of China Update where I try and help you guys keep on top of the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. This week we're going to do this episode a little bit differently rather than looking at about half a dozen major developments in China over the last seven days. We're going to do a deep dive into two major ongoing developments in the People's Republic of China. The first will be looking at the continued discussions in the mainland on the new policy direction of common prosperity and what this could mean for the world's number two economy in terms of major economic changes. The second, as there is more global attention on the possible lab leak hypothesis, there has been a strong state media reaction to this as the PRC pushes its own narratives. And so we're going to be looking at how the PRC has responded. Let's jump in. Talk on common prosperity and what it means for the world's number two economy continues into this week. It's important that we follow what experts, economists, academics and policymakers are saying in China itself to get an idea of where this new policy direction may be headed. Last week we discussed common prosperity as well and I gave my own analysis regarding my concerns with, with this new policy direction and the challenges that policymakers in Beijing will be facing in trying to pursue it. You guys can check out that last video up here uh, for that analysis. But for now, let's look at how this uh, new direction is being discussed and debated within China itself. The first question, of course, is what is causing this push towards common prosperity now? What is the motivation? Quote, the new focus is on achieving the goal of common prosperity and social equality. China's economic development has entered a new stage and it is important to ensure that all people enjoy the fruits of reform and development in a fair way. We must promote the common prosperity of all people as it is the foundation of the people's happiness on which we can continue to strengthen the party's long-term governance. End quote. As we discussed last week, inequality is a major challenge for the People's Republic of China. Quote, China's wealth gap is more salient than its income gap. In 2020, the wealth gap increased despite the trend of alleviation in recent years. Between 2000 and 2015, China's wealth Gini coefficient rose from 0.599 to 0.711. As an aside, to put that in perspective, in 2019, the uh, US Gini coefficient was 0.48. Continue with the quote, quote, the COVID-19 pandemic drove the 2020 figure back to 0.704. In 2020, China's richest 1% held 30.6% of the total wealth in China. End quote. And the government is very aware of this issue. Quote, realizing common prosperity is more than an economic goal. It is a major political issue that bears on our party's governance foundation. We cannot allow the gap between the rich and the poor to continue growing, for the poor to keep getting poorer while the rich continue getting richer. We cannot permit the wealth gap to become an unbridgeable gulf. End quote. Okay, so that is the motivation behind common prosperity policies. But what are China's economists saying about this new policy direction? Well, the concerns circle around whether or not the government turns to an overzealous redistribution which hurts wealth creation, innovation, and general economic dynamism, and that this needs to be avoided. Quote, We can't realize common prosperity through robbing the rich and aiding the poor, or the pursuit of egalitarianism, because doing so will only lead to common poverty. The priority should be focused on increasing incomes of people on the bottom rung of society. The prerequisite of common prosperity is that the pie must continue to get bigger. End quote. End quote. However, when formulating policies to narrow the income gap, we must consider economic laws. Otherwise, we will do bad things with good intentions. For example, if China unilaterally introduces an inheritance tax, it will lead to capital flight, which will not help improve workers' incomes, but will also affect overall economic growth. Given the transnational mobility of capital, the taxation of capital must seek international cooperation. End Quote, it seems the central government is aware of the concerns among wealthier Chinese business people and economists, with top officials coming out to calm people down on Friday. Quote, we allow some people to become well off first, who then inspire and help latecomers. We will not opt for a robbing the rich for the poor approach. End quote. State media too produced similar stories on Friday seeking to manage the messaging and calm people, of course blaming Westerners for the confusion. Quote, 
Common prosperity is not egalitarianism. It is by no means robbing the rich to help the poor as misinterpreted by some Western media. Protecting legitimate private property has been written into China's constitution. End quote. It's important too that we do not confuse this broader policy direction of common prosperity with the more narrowly defined crackdown on technology companies and the private education sector which uh, we have seen and have covered on here in recent weeks and recent months, though there is some limited crossover in the goals of policymakers. Harvard Economist and Monetary Policy Committee member at China's Central Bank, Li Daokui, gave an interview this week to make just this point. Quote, Common prosperity is achieved by providing more public services, and antitrust is another topic. Antitrust is at the corporate level, which means that companies should not abuse their market power. If you mix the two together, you get a lot of misunderstanding and policy misdirection. End quote. Like I said, common prosperity talk may be here to stay and may have profound effects on China's economy. So we will continue follow, following it very closely. If you guys are enjoying the episode, don't forget to hit that like button. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this is real content from a real creator, which is very useful when you are discussing sensitive subject matter and you're a small channel. I release one of these every week, so if you think you're getting some sort of value from these episodes, from these videos, maybe consider subscribing and you'll get notified when I release these. I also want to take this opportunity to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate your support. Cheers. On Tuesday, the U.S. Director of National Intelligence delivered a report to the U.S. President Joe Biden on the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Though the report is classified, media in the U.S. reports that there were no firm conclusions found in the report. And that U.S. officials are saying that the intelligence community has not yet determined whether the disease was the result of an accidental leak from a laboratory uh, or laboratory for our U.S. friends in Wuhan, or if it emerged naturally from an animal to human spillover event. Late in the week, it was being reported in the U.S. that one U.S. intelligence agency assesses with quote-unquote moderate confidence that the coronavirus most likely emerged from a Chinese government lab in Wuhan, while four U.S. spy agencies and the National Intelligence Council only have quote-unquote low confidence. This is all within the context, of course, of renewed global attention on the lab leak hypothesis after almost a year of the hypothesis being somewhat censored in mainstream political and scientific discussions, particularly in the United States. There are more voices calling for another examination of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, including from the head of the World Health Organization. Now, if it was established that COVID was the result of an, a lab leak, even an accidental one, it would cause incredible reputational damage for the People's Republic of China. Due to the widespread suffering the pandemic has caused, a global opinion that it was caused by a lab leak could be more damaging to China's reputation than the war in Iraq, or the global financial crisis was for the United States. The People's Republic of China has continued to assertively express that it is that it has acted in a highly responsible manner throughout this international crisis. With more attention on the lab leak hypothesis now, the PRC state media apparatus has aggressively pushed its own narrative. Now let's take a look at what the media in China are saying. State-run uh, CGTN reports that uh, Chen Xu permanent representative of China to the UN office in Geneva in Switzerland on Tuesday wrote to the Director General of the World Health Organization, further reiterating China's position on COVID-19 origins tracing. Quote, the hypothesis that the introduction of SARS-CoV-2 into human population was caused by a lab leak in the Wuhan Institute of Virology is extremely unlikely, Chen said. If some parties are of the view that the lab leak hypothesis remains open, it is the labs of Fort Detrick and the University of North Carolina in the U.S. that should be subject to transparent investigation with full access, Chen added. Chinese state media this week, too, is reporting that Chinese research institutions claim that the U.S. is, quote, manipulating global public opinion by practicing origin-tracing terrorism, end quote. And if that wasn't enough, this week, state-run Global Times ran a piece comparing discussions of the lab leak hypothesis internationally to the practices of Nazi Germany. Quote, Repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. This is a famous law of propaganda by Joseph Goebbels, the Reich Minister of Propaganda of Nazi Germany from 1933 to 1945. 
It is a traditional trick frequently used by Western countries. End quote. And went on to say, quote, Now, on the COVID-19 origins tracing the Goebbels effect, the tendency to believe false information to be correct after repeated exposure is now manifested again by Washington's politicians today. By passing the buck and smearing China, they have played the role of a modern Goebbels. They first claim that COVID-19 leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and then they have kept on repeating this lie. End quote. Okay, guys, this was a little bit shorter than usual. Next week, we'll go back to the regular style of the program, where we look at several developments over the week. But this is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Throw your comments below. It's always a pleasure to hear from you guys. And until next time, I hope you're staying safe and staying sane. See you next time on China Update.